run this race. Oh, Lord, be my guide. Be my guide. Be my guide.
can't you feel it tonight? Come on, say it again. Your name, Jesus. Your name, Jesus. Jesus, your name. Your name brings healing to me. Come on, I am free. I am free, I am free, these chains have no hold on me, and I've been healed, hallelujah, I Chains have no hold on me. I've been healed. Hallelujah. Your name, Jesus. Your Lift your hands with me tonight. Come on. I am free. Come on, say. I am free. And these chains have no hold on me. I've been healed. Hallelujah. Woo, come on, give him praise for that tonight. Come on, say it again. I am free. I am free. These chains have no hold on me. I've been healed. Hallelujah. Come on, your Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. the 
goodness of God. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All of my days I've been held. moment that I wake up till I lay my head I will see of the goodness of God all of my life you have been faithful the good 
your goodness is running after, running after me. Your goodness is running after, running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Come on. With my life laid down, I surrender.
goodness of God. You know, a lot of us, as you remain standing, a lot of us, typical Monday, you're tired. <laughs> but Brie's going to sing just one last song. It's just a kind of a short song, but I just want you to forget about everything that happened today. Forget about all your toils, all your tears, all your stress. Forget about your job. Forget about your kids. Forget about your husband. Forget about him. Forget about her. And just come in a realization that there is a God that stands by your side. No matter how bad of a day you had or how good of a day you had, there is a God that's standing right beside your side right now. And he says that he loves you. He says that he cares about you. That whatever thoughts that you had today, oh, I'm going to kill him when I get home. That murderous spirit. God is by your side. And the more that we recognize that, the more we worship him and give him gratitude everything that he's done. So as my wife sings a song, however you got to worship, you got to go on your knees, you, you just got to get walk and pace, whatever it is. But I just want you to get in a mindset. Whatever you've gone through today, it's in the past. Get rid of it right now and just get your eyes on the Lord right now. If you got to sit there, sit there. If you got to walk, walk. If you got to kneel, you got to kneel. But just make this your heart song to him right now and he's listening to you. song of love to my Savior to my Jesus I'm thankful for the things you've done my love Precious Jesus, I sing a simple song of love to my Savior, to my Jesus. you've called me your own. There's no place I'd rather be than in your arms of love. In your Jesus, my heart is glad that 
you called me your own there's no place i would rather be than in your arms of love in your arms of love holding me still holding me in your arms of love in your arms of love in your arms of love holding me still Keep on worshiping. Your arms of love. There's some of you that you're afraid. You're afraid to give up of what you have because it's all that you have. You're afraid to give it all to God and say, God, here I am. Take me. You're afraid and you have your reserves. But can I tell you, falling in the arms of a God that loves you is the greatest feeling, is the greatest experience that you ever know. And you've experienced it once before, but now you find yourself bound, and now you find yourself trying to fill your emotions, trying to fill your void with every other thing. Because you know, giving your all to Jesus Christ, <laughs> it's going to require all of you. Why? Because God doesn't desire you in pieces, but God wants the whole thing. God wants all of you. Some of you just need to fall in his arms with no reserve. You were there at one time before. But now everything in your mind is telling you not to do it. Everything in your mind is telling you it's not worth it. And I don't know what lies of the enemy you've been listening to. But God is here for you. Just that chorus one more time and I challenge you. Just fall in his arms tonight. simple song of love come on no fear in raising your hands to my savior ah uh, you feel that freedom to my jesus <sighs> i'm thankful for the things you've done my loving Savior, my precious Jesus, my heart is glad that you've called me your own. There's no place I would rather be.
Open your heart tonight. Come on. We say yes. Come on, whatever you want from me, God. Yes, Lord. Yes. Come on, whatever you want me to do. Come on. We say yes. Wherever you want me to go. Amen. Go ahead and have a praise here tonight. Amen. God is so good. God is so good. Amen. Just uh, just a reminder that we have uh, one more night with Brother uh, Pastor Buffalo, and that's tomorrow night at 6.30. And so it's not too late to get on Facebook, invite your friends, get on Instagram, Tinder. I, I don't know, whatever you do, um, whatever it is you like. Uh, but uh, just come on, and uh, we'll be here uh, tomorrow night. Uh, with that said, um, we're going to go ahead and go right into offering real quick. Um, just go ahead and bring up your offering. Um, the offering baskets. There's an offering basket. Oh, there's one offering basket. Okay. Here we go. And so, Sister Crystal, will stand real quick. And while I'm doing the announcements, go ahead and uh, just bring up your um, offering. Uh, all the offering tonight is going to go to Brother um, brother Dean Buffalo. Uh, I'll go to him and his expenses and so I'm just going to pray over it, and then you guys just go ahead and bring up your offering here real quick. And so let me just pray over it real quick. Uh, Father, we thank you for tonight, Lord. We thank you for 
Lord, for the needs that you're providing, Father. And even as we come and we plant this gift, Father, we understand, Lord, that, Lord, the more that we sow, the more that we're going to reap, Father. Your word says we sow sparingly, we're going to reap sparingly, but we sow bountifully, we're going to reap bountifully. And, Father, we thank you for the harvest and what you have for us. We thank you, Father, for everything that you're going to do. Bless this offering, Lord, and bless those that are give. In the name of Jesus, and everybody said... Amen. So you go ahead and bring up your offering, and uh, I'll just do some announcements here real quick. Um, some announcements is don't forget that on Wednesday we're having regular Bible study here at 6.30. And then on Thursday we're having nothing, so enjoy your night off on Thursday night. And then coming on Friday we will be having nothing again, so enjoy your Friday and then Saturday, nothing. So enjoy your Saturday. Man, you guys have like three days off here. That's uh, pretty good. And then Sunday morning, we have a regular Sunday morning service here at 10 a.m. Amen. At 10 a.m., we're having our regular service. And I believe that's going to be the first um, Sunday of the month. And the first Sunday of the month, we are having night services. Um, so get this. And so we're going to start this new thing. And so we're going to start having Sunday night services. The first Sunday night service is going to be an open service, and we're going to invite an outside minister to come in and minister for us. Uh, the next Sunday, the second Sunday of the month, is going to be a ladies' night out. The ladies are going to come, and they're going to have their night of service. Uh, the third Sunday of the evening of the month is going to be a men's. And then the last is just going to be a regular open service. And so um, that's the way we're going to try it, and that's the way we're going to do it, and that's the way in which we're going to see um, God move. And so praise the Lord. Um, is that it? Okay. So praise the Lord. I think that's all the announcements that we have, I believe. That's it. All right. And right now, we'd just like to turn to the, we'd like to give him a time, as uh, much time as possible, uh, Pastor uh, Dean Buffalo and the Buffalo Gang Band. Can you please? Amen. Let's give a round of applause to the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. <clears throat> I want to give honor to Jesus Christ as the Lord, amen, over the Apache nation, amen. And we're honored again one more time to be here and, uh, and give honor to pastors, amen, Pastor Christian, uh, Pastor Brittany, amen, getting to know some more names, amen, Daniel, amen, John, and amen, I, Terry, amen, I believe Terry, amen. This is, I'm getting to know, amen, has, I also, I was, I also forgot last night to mention that, uh, Rushing winds uh, wanted to say, God bless you and love you, and they send their prayers. Amen. So, amen. <laughs> so, I want to do that. And, um, but we're just, we're just grateful, amen, to be here tonight. Amen. I, I'm going to try one song before I turn them loose. Somebody want to hear me sing? I might sound like, like a little bit rasp, rasky, raspy, but try one song. I'm going to thank God, amen, for, amen, the late Johnny Curtis. Amen. He was an uh, influence, amen, on, on, on Crow Nation. And he was friends with my, my stepdad, my mom, you know. And so I just thought that the song is just, uh, you know, profound, even of this day. That seemed like I was really singing this during the, during the pandemic. Uh, Lord, how I need you. So would you go ahead? Yeah. Just put your hands together, amen. Yes, Lord. Lord, how I need you. Can I get it up? Like I ever need you. I need you in a very special way. Because lately I've been going through some things I can't explain. And lately, I've been feeling a lot of pain. 
I need you. I need you. Lord, I need you. I need you. Lord, come and help me. Lead me through this day. So many things on my mind I need to say. For the reasons and the seasons and the troubles. And it's time. The calling of the ministry to me. I need you. I need you. Lord, I need you. I need you. Oh, how many need the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody just worship him. Oh, we just praise you tonight, Lord. Oh, yeah. Looking at tomorrow, let me understand. Forgetting those things that happened yesterday. For you forever with me, and you truly be my friend. No pardon for another will ever come. Somebody shout, Amen. I need you. Come on. I need you. Lord, I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. Lord, I need you. I need you. Hallelujah. Amen. So um, I'm Mahila Buffalo, my sister. Um, I'll give a little testimony about myself. Um, so I have a, uh, I'm just blessed to be here, amen. You know, like I said yesterday, it's a huge blessing and an honor. Um, you know, I've uh, been serving the Lord for a very long time. I got saved when I was around, shoot, I was like a toddler. Um, but of course, I had my setbacks, you know, and had my moments when I would, uh, would have doubt, you know, and had my hard hardships, you know. And, you know, but, you know, growing up and, and putting my trust in the Lord, you know, that's where it really, really counted. And, you know, I never really seen myself up on stage never really seen myself singing in front of people um, but you know what the Lord works in mysterious ways you know and I from a young age I love to sing I love to play drums I love to play guitar but that was really about it and one day you know I I told the Lord you know I was going through some certain things I was around 15 maybe and I was crying out to the, out to the Lord because I was going through some things and I told the Lord, Lord, if you want to use me, use me, Lord, because I'm here, you know, I'm listening like, like that song, you know, she was singing, yes, Lord, you know, and that's kind of what I did. And man, ever since then, you know, the Lord, he's, he's led me the entire way, you know, step by step, you know, and sometimes, you know, you don't know what you're, what you're expecting on the other end of the end of the road but you know what when you put your trust in the Lord he says that I will never leave you nor forsake you and that stuck with me for half of my life and so I just want to bless you guys with a couple songs
Hallelujah. Somebody just give him the praise. Somebody just give him the praise. Amen. Our God is awesome. Amen. Our God is mighty. God is provider. God is the way maker. Father, I pray that you would use me one more time, God, Lord, tonight, Lord. Use me for your glory and honor, Lord. And thank you that, God, that we get to be here. Lord, God, to minister amongst, amen, your people, amen, here tonight. I pray that God, Lord, amen, Lord, as you give me the eyes of compassion and a heart of mercy, God, Lord, I am your, amen, your feet and your hands, Lord. I pray that it be a vessel, as Paul talked about it and said, we're earthen vessels, that that excellency and the power will be of God and not of us. And I thank you for that, Heavenly Father. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Thank you, young. Amen. Appreciate my daughters. Uh, the one that's on drums, uh, she's a senior in high school. Amen. She's a senior in high school. I don't know if I've already mentioned that. Did I mention that? Um, she's a senior in high school, and uh, uh, she'll be graduating in June. Amen. And God is doing great uh, work in her life as well and you know and uh, she she also she also can sing amen she's but she's not she's just not ready yet to do that amen but she got the, she's got a voice amen to really sing um, <clears throat> my other children amen my my um, my three I have three three children me and my wife we have five kids and uh, my youngest one, she's 10 years old. She plays, she's starting to learn guitar and, and play drums, amen. And uh, my Judea, uh, 12 years old, uh, and boy, she's almost the tallest of all of them. Uh, uh, Judea, amen. And she just loves the Lord. I call her uh, Speaker of the House because she's, she's not afraid, boy. She just gets up and talks. But she, she's learning keyboard, amen. Amen. She's learning keyboard. And um, and so my son, Masada, amen, he'll jump on the guitar and he'll jump on the drums and he's like, just don't don't try to call me up there, Dad. But he'll get up there and he'll start playing, amen. And I think that soon probably uh, we'll have a completion, amen, of the, I call them my five smooth stones, amen. Uh, the Buffalo Band would all, amen, will all come together, amen. But I thank the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, as uh, I was stating last night, that second night tonight, uh, last night we talked about identity and purpose. And uh, tonight we're, we're, we're going to talk about uh, location. Location. And uh, I want, I'm not going to keep you too long. Um, if, you don't, if I don't get any amens, I'm going to keep going. Nah. Um, when talk about talk about the lo you know location and then you know then 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 our purpose concerning that location, Amen. Um, in the book of Romans eight twenty eight, it tells us it says, "For we know all things uh, work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose, Amen." And you know. I know that everything, you know, everything's going to work out, you know, for us, for, for, uh, for every, you know, for every one of us being here, here tonight. And, um, and, you know, when I was thinking about um, the scripture, you know, the scriptures as the Lord was, you know, I was just, you know, coming before the Lord and it's like, Lord, you know, and the Lord would would say this, you know, to Joshua. Um, he tell he would tell Joshua, and he'd say, um, 
if I could. Um, he tells Joshua, and he says that in Joshua chapter 3, he said, you, he said, you haven't, uh, you haven't been here before. You haven't been, been to this place before. Amen. And, and the place, you know, talking about uh, location, location. And, um, you know, when we, when we talk about that location, it means that, um, talks about a particular place or a position. It's for God's purpose for us being there. Amen. And regardless of words that in our lives, you know, you know whether whether it's Canyon Canyon Day or where I'm, you know, where I'm pastoring from, Ronan, Montana, you know, um, when when one of the disciples told uh, Nehemiah, uh, he told Nathaniel. Philip told Nathaniel, and he said, he said, come, he said, come. He said, we found him. We found, we found the Messiah. He said, the prophets um, prophesied about him. And Nathaniel, he began to say, is there anything, any good thing coming out of Nazareth? Is there any good thing coming out of Nazareth? And, and Philip, Philip tells him, and he says, come, come and see. Amen. Come and see. And, and, and just like it, it is with, with our lives that wherever, wherever we're from, our location, you know, in the particular place, our, our the very position that God, God has us, um, and that's where God wants us to be. It could be places, just like with Joshua. I've never, I've never been here before. Uh, one of, uh, we, have an, we have an Apache uh, lady in our church known, uh, known as Sister Dorinda. And she was always wanting to get me over here to San Carlos or, or to, uh, you know, you know, over uh, Fort McDowell or, you know, one of the places. I haven't been there. Just, just you know, heard about it, saw it. And, um, <clears throat> and then she says, well, if I send you over there, if we go over there, they said they, they, they won't let you return home. They're going to keep you there. They're going to keep inviting you from house to house, or, you know. And... Uh, I, I, I was very, you know, a stat, you know, stating my heart, you know, you know, to always want to come to Arizona, and and then giving the privilege and the honor, you know, for your guys' pastors to invite us to come, amen, and and you know, and I haven't I haven't flown uh, airlines for 30 years, amen, since I was in high school, and you know, I was you know kind of real tense there, you know. I said, well, Lord, I'm rapture ready now, amen. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but, um, you know, being, you know, stepping on the, you know, on this ground, you know, it's a very, you know, a new place for me, a new place that the Lord has, you know, has called, amen, called for me to come. And not only that, he's appointed my daughters to come with me, amen. And, uh, and you know, by popular demand, I hope I get invited back, eh? Amen. Let me hear the, let me hear the eyes. No, I say, yeah. But amen. We we love to come back again, Pastor Christian. Amen. Lord, Lord willing. Amen. Lord's will be done. We thank we thank God for that. And so, amen. We we understand that um, you know the location of where uh, the Lord is you know is speaking into our lives and um, you know in Isaiah fifty four Isaiah the prophet fifty four. Isaiah 54, in, in verse, uh, verse 1, it says, Sing, sing, O barren, you who have not uh, born, break forth into singing. Cry out loud, you who have not travailed with child. For more are the children of the, of the desolate than the children of the of the married woman, says the Lord. And this is this is like a this is like a prophecy, amen. A prophecy that's going forth, praise God. 
and and in the Lord, you know, he will use he will use he will use dreams, he will use visions. Just like just like Jacob when he had a dream, when he when he dreamt. He he laid his head on a on a on a rock and he began to dream and he began to see angels descending and ascending up to heaven. And as 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 God began to speak into his life, you know, he said, I'm gonna bless you. I'm I'm, I'm blessing you because of your father. I'm blessing you because of your grandfather. He said, you, you, come from, you come from a good family. Amen. And, and, and he said, and, and he said, I'm gonna bless you. Hallelujah. And 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 when he when he woke up, he he realized that that place that he was on, he called it the very place of the house, the house of God, the place he called Bethel, where he saw angels ascending and descending down. And that's the same thing with, with, with uh, Nathaniel when, when he came and saw the Lord, Jesus. Jesus told him, he said, you're going to see angels ascending up and ascending down. Kind of, kind of an open gateway to heaven. Amen. And so because of that, God has given us, amen, you know, a word of prophecy. His word will not return back void. It's going to accomplish. It's going to prosper. It's going to bring great success. Whatever he says, it's going to happen. <laughs> and, and, and we're just, amen, we're just going forth, amen, by the spoken word of God. And I remember, remember when I, God had called me, you know, a young, at a young age, Seen a lot of churches on a Crow Indian reservation. And I was just kind of grew up in camp meeting myself. You know, grew up, my grandmother, you know, then they, they camp, you know, and, and that's kind of what I, you know, always envisioned. I've seen a Crow uh, reservation of uh, the late Harold Carpenter. I don't know if anyone, anybody knows knows these people. Joe Tobacco, amen. A um, lot, of, lot of the old ones, older ones, forerunners. Harold Carpenter is my... My my grand uncle kind of started started the first church on a on a in, in Lodge Grass on a Crow Indian reservation. That's where my mom got saved. We call it Lodge Grass Church. And so that was one of the things that I looked forward to. I saw I've seen a lot of them, like John and Curtis come in. I've seen a lot of ministers come in, amen. And um, so I always see people people from all over coming. And loving God, and that's what I saw. Saw the power of God moving, even as I was a little kid. And I always envisioned people coming together and being united, coming into unity together. And I asked my mom one day. I said, "Mom, I said, what are these ministries? I said, what 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 are these ministries in the Bible?" And and she said, "Well, there's a fivefold ministry." You have your you have your apostle, you have your prophet, you have your evangelist, you have your pastor, you have your teacher. I said, are those the, are those the ministries? And the Lord said, yeah. <clears throat> and I said, I said, I I said, uh, um, I want to, you know, I said, which one's the greatest? <laughs> and my mom said, all of them are great. Amen. Every one of them are great for the Lord. Well, I said, who are the ones that walk with Jesus? He said, those are, those are the apostles. And I said, I want to be an apostle. Amen. <laughs> I want to be an apostle. And a young, young age, amen, calling of God upon my life. 20 years old, the man of God would begin to prophesy to me. They're in Browning, Montana on a Blackfeet Indian Reservation. When I was working at Town Pump at the deli, flipping flipping burgers, you know, cooking, you know, burritos, you know, sweeping the floors, I began to feel feel the the unction of the Spirit of God moving in my heart. I start I started envisioning becoming a man of God, <clears throat> and I started seeing myself with, with the Lord was calling me to, to do. And um, and that's the thing is that many times out of our, our circumstances, as you heard me 
last night of how God restored the brain damage. I ran from the calling of God. I don't I didn't want to I didn't want anything to do with the Lord. My mom testified and talked about what the man of God told her that what I was gonna be. You know, during during services, she would call me out from outside. Elmer, Elmer, come inside. Let let them see you. Let 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 God let let them see what God has done for you. I'd be ashamed. I'd be embarrassed. And I won't go in. I said, man, I said, how can she how come she'd call me out like this? Get mad and I run off. Run home. Then when she came back home, you know how it is after after service, after revival, you're feeling excited, revived. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be there persecuting her, getting mad. But that was the thing is that I, I ran from the calling of God in my life until I gave my, and then I gave my heart to Jesus when Jesus was speaking into my heart of what. And nobody forced me to the altar. Nobody twisted my arm. You know, you got to get saved. It was the Lord's drawing of your spirit upon my life that I said yes to the Lord in 1996. Gave my heart to God. But it's been a process since that time. It never, it never, it was never easy. Amen. As I said last night, it's a, it's a working, we're a working, we're a work, you know, God is working on us, a work in progress. But I won't trade it for the wor- for the world, amen? I won't trade it, amen, amen, all these years that I've been serving God, I won't trade it for anything. He's, he's you know, he's, you know, put, put me in a, in a good place. I don't, I don't, I don't pastor on my own reservation. I pastor on a flatted Indian reservation. They're, they're in, uh, uh, you know, uh, in Ronan, Montana, on the northwest of, of Montana. Next, we're right close to Missoula, in between there, Kalispell. And how I got there was through college, Danish Kootenai College. That's where I met my wife. Amen. But there was the church that that. That I went over to to find a good church because I wanted to find a Holy Ghost filled church. Kind of wondering where the where the Indians were at. How many know that sometimes? You just gotta find where the Indians are at. And man, I you know, my brother said it's it's more uh, it's more Bashtila, you know, Bashtila. More what you know, white. But he said there's a few Indians there. So I went over there and I walked in there, you know, and he wasn't there. There was just a, you know, flathead family that was standing in the back and it was full of the other people. And from there, I, I, had a, I had a burden for the people. Amen. And the Lord, the Lord was strategically bringing to a place and to a location. And sometimes, amen, he works in mysterious ways. Sometimes he'll bring us, he'll bring us to a place. Sometimes we think it's going to be over, over in Cro- Cro- agency where, 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 you know, my family's at. Sometimes we think it's going to be, amen, somewhere else. But God, God is saying, this, this is where I'm going to use you. This is, this is where, amen, my prophecy, amen, upon your life, is, amen, is going to come to pass. This is where I'm going to get the glory out of your life. And you may, you know, in that time, in that process of those 10 years after going to that church and having a burden for the people, I didn't, I didn't join that church. I, st- I still continued with school, didn't answer the calling of God, and I was an independent pastor with the All Nations Ministry. We were renting buildings, the flat, the flatted senior citizen center. We were there, and then some, then, then, then they, they, the elders they didn't like us there, so they kick us out of there. We end up going to Katuknex, you know, in the conference room. And then, then we were, you know, our time was up. Then we move over this way. Come on, kind of like the children of Israel. The children of Israel, they tell, they tell us that in Exodus, that. That when the glory of the Lord begin to amen descend, that's where that's where they begin to 
find their location. And they begin to set up, they begin to set up camp. They begin to, amen, as Moses was instructed to do. Moses was faithful in his house. And the part that I always like is that in, in that in, inside walking into that into that tabernacle, not the holy of holies, but inside that tabernacle, there was there was the showbread. There was the bahwa. Amen. There was the fry bread. The 12 tribes of Israel, every tribe, amen, amen, made fry bread. It was like pancakes type. They gave it to the priests. It was the, for the priests, amen, for them to, amen, to eat and, 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 and to eat it. And that signifies the word of God. Come on. That signifies what, when the devil came, amen, against the Lord, he said, command these, these bread, you know. He said, command them. He said, there were stones. They command them, amen, amen, as bread. And Jesus, amen, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We have to, we have to, amen, and we have to eat the, eat the bread, amen. We have to, we have to, it nourishes us, our spirit, man, our soul, man. And, and the bread, and the bread of life is Jesus, come on. And then on the left side in there, across from there, was the golden lampstand, the seven golden lampstand. And he, he instructed, amen, Aaron and Moses. He said, this, this lamp is to never go out. Come on. He said, you're going you're gonna to keep fresh oil flowing in this lamp. Come on. How many, how many thank God for fresh oil flowing in this house of God? How many thank God that there's fresh oil flowing in your prayer life? How many know that when we pray and we seek him and seek him in a secret place in the in the prayer closet, he's gonna begin to see us in that secret place and he's gonna begin to reward us openly. Come on. Because that's where we're that's where we're gonna dwell. We're gonna dwell in the secret place of the most high God, under the shadow of the most high God. Come on, somebody. I will say of the Lord, come on. He is my refuge. I will say of the Lord, he is my help. Come on. I will say of the Lord, amen, he is my provider. I will say of the Lord, he is my healer. I will say of the Lord, he will fight my battles. He will take care of my children even better than I can even take care of them. He knows the plans. He knows he's the master planner. He is the one, amen. Amen knows, amen, all about it. He said, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. But you know what? We can know, we, we can know that when we get into the secret place. When we get into the shadow of the almighty God. Come on, somebody. Look, look with me in Psalms. That way you know I'm, I'm not lying to you. But how many know that we got to eat this bread? That you know that I'm telling, the, I'm telling you the truth from the word, from the bread of, from the bread. We, I like to, See this as, as Moses' psalms. Some say it's David's, you know, but I always think about it, of, of, uh, of Moses because Moses wrote Psalm 90. He talked about the tabernacles of God. But you, as he begins to, as, as he begins to, Moses, amen, is, is, is writing this out. And then the Lord, and the Lord begins to speak to Moses in verse, verse um, 14. He said, because he has set his love upon me. Who's he? That's me. That's you. Come on. That's, that's your congregation. 
That's your children. That's your grandchildren. Because Dean has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver Dean. Come on. I will set him on high because he has known my name. That's why Jacob, amen, he had that dream. And he understood that God was speaking to him. And sometimes God's got to speak to us in dreams because we're so busy with our lives. We're so busy in a hustle and bustle of life. We're so busy. We're so caught up, amen, with this life that we're not spending time, amen, in the presence of God. And that's why sometimes God has to speak to us when we're laying down. <laughs> I got a dream. I got a vision. And God begins to speak to your spirit. You bear witness with your spirit. And some of you are bearing witness of what I'm saying because God is speaking to you. But the devil wants you to make you feel like you're insignif insignificant. And, 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 and maybe, uh, amen, with your marriage, and maybe, maybe with a brother, maybe with your co-worker, making you feel like you're less than really what, of what you are. I thank God for Pastor Christian. I, I can see the fruit of this ministry. I can see the, 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 the ones that are here. They... They're, they're, they're so, not to use the word proud in a bad way, amen? But they're, they have such of a, a pride in their heart of what they do. Come on. They have a, such of an excellent spirit in their hearts, amen, to, to please, amen, the Heavenly Father. Come on. Just operating in that office of the, the, the gifts of helps. Just impressing, amen, to see what they're doing. I think we might just be here another three days, Pastor. My daughters don't want to leave. They just said that a while ago. I don't know if it was the, I don't know if it was the chicken or the, you know. The other. Come on. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? You guys have an awesome, awesome work that the Lord is doing. Come on. And so he tells him, and he says, because he set his love upon me, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he's known my name. Somebody say, he knows my name. There's a song that my, my daughter sings. He knows my name. Every step that I take. May a lot of go. Every move that I make, I know I'll be just fine. Can you say amen? Because he knows my name. And because you know his name, you're going to know what's going on on the inside. He's going he's gonna to let you know what's going on on the inside. Amen. The kingdom of God. Jesus even said that. He said, I'm not calling you servants. He said, I'm calling you friends. Because the servants don't know what the master is doing. But he said, I'm gonna, he said, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what the father is saying to me. Come on. He said, I'm gonna let you know what's going on. In Psalm 107, Amen, he talks about that. He said, Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and everything that is within me, bless his holy name. And forget not all his benefits who forgiven you of all your iniquities and healed thee of all your diseases. Who delivered you from destruction and crowned thee with, with a crown of tender mercy. Come on, somebody. He said, and I'm showing, he said, I showed Moses my ways. But the children of Israel, Israel my acts. Do you see the difference? He told Moses the plans of what he's going to do. He's, he's, he's given him revelation. Just like he did with Simon Peter. Come on. Before it even happens. He speaks a word upon your life and he says, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do for your family. This is what I'm going to do for your church. 
This is what I'm going to do for camp meeting. This is what I'm going to do, even for those that are on the streets. Don't count them out. Don't count the backslider out. Don't count the ones, amen, that are, that are hurting out there. Those ones, just like the one that was wounded at Jericho, where the thief, where the, where the, where the priest would just walk on by like he didn't even see him there. Where the Levi would just walk right where he was and step over him. I don't know if he did that, but doesn't that seem kind of cool? <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe he had long legs. I went. But somebody came and his name was, was Jesus. Amen. Saw that man laying there. And he had compassion on him. He saw that, that he was stripped. And maybe there are some that, that have used to, amen, serve God. Their mantles have been stripped from them. The thief and robber have come and stolen from them and wounded them. Where we have a lot of people that are, that are hurting. But how many know that the Lord is the answer? Only God is able to reach the unreach. Only God is able to touch the untouched. Only God is able to minister to them that are in captivity. God is able to restore the family. God is able to heal, amen, the father. God is able to heal, amen, the mother. Hallelujah. Sing out loud, O barren. Cry out loud. More is with the desolate woman. Come on. I may, amen, my children may be, amen, on drugs. My children might be in jail. Amen, maybe my ministry may not be happening right now. But I'm going to begin to just lift up my voice like a trumpet. I'm going to lift up my voice every time they worship. I'm going to worship every time they, they, they sing. I'm going to sing every time they play. I'm going to shout. And the enemy will, will try to speak into your mind. Amen. The enemy, amen, is always, amen, on the, on the attack. And he's, amen, trying to tell you not to, amen, to believe that. But he's given us weapons, come on, of our warfare. They're not carnal, but they're mighty through God. Through God, not, not of me. Not of a man, not of, amen, amen, a big organization, but mighty through God by the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And that's what the enemy does. He attacks that word. He attacks that knowledge. He attacks that revelation. He attacks that dream. You try to tell people about your vision. You try to tell people about what the Lord has done for you. Some people will just laugh at you. Some people would even just shake their heads at you and say, no, that's not going to happen. How many have been there before? When I got the calling of God in my life, amen, I was excited about the calling of God on my life. And then having, having somebody tell, telling me that I wasn't called to be a preacher, an elder. He said, you're not, you're not called to be a preacher. He said, you're called to do, to do these other things. My son is the preacher. My son-in-law is the preacher. My other son is the pastor. There I was standing there. And I was young, and I lost all joy in my heart. Don't let the enemy take that joy from you. The world cannot take it away. This joy that I have, the devil can't take it away. This peace that I have, he can't take it away. But I didn't, I didn't stop. 
I questioned myself. I said, well, well, you ever been there? Second thoughts, oh, maybe I heard that wrong. Maybe it's just me dreaming. Maybe it's just me having visions. Come on. And that's what the, the, the enemy wants to do. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Don't let him. You keep that lampstand burning in your life. You keep yourself stirred up in your life. You keep yourself, amen, in the presence of God. Come on, somebody. Amen. You walk, amen, amen. Amen. You walk and talk like, amen, you're somebody. Come on. You tell him, amen. He said, amen. He said, if you hearken unto me, my word, Deuteronomy 28, you'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the country, blessed coming in, blessed coming out. The enemy may come in one way, he'll scatter them seven ways. Come on, somebody. Enemy may think he's going to come in like a flood, but the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost and power. I'm talking about, amen, the Holy Ghost living inside of you. I'm talking about fresh oil flowing out of you. Oh, hallelujah. Keep that, keep that lamps burning. Keep it, keep it burning, fresh oil. Come on. Eating the word of God. Amen, keeping the oil filled. Oil. Sympathize the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? My daughter was five years old, amen. Every time we had altar call, amen, people start getting slain in the spirit. People were, were shaking, you know, all over the place. And amen, people were dancing. The power of God will begin to demonstrate. My little girl, she started crying. She started crying. Ah! I'm, I'm, I'm trying to throw you under the bus. She, was, she would cry. She thought, Oh, man, she's scared. Then one time, I tried to comfort her. She said, I'm not crying because I'm scared. I'm crying because I feel something in my heart. Come on. And, and, me, and me and her mom begin to raise her up, train up the child in a way it should go. When it get old, it will never depart from it. Teach your children diligently. Teach your children, amen, when you're at the house. Come on. Teach your children. Speak into their lives. Amen. Do whatever you can. Help them. Got some drums from, from Walmart. Put on some Jim Felix. I don't know if it was Johnny Curtis or one of them. Do, 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 you know. Keep up with that, baby. Keep up with that drum, right? The drums. She would, she would do that. And she, it, one day, you're going to be a, a worship leader. Come on. One day, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be used of God. How many know that God honors His Word? God doesn't have no favorites. But what he does, he honors his word. He honors them that honor his name. And everything that you're doing, from taking out the trash, from vacuuming, from, from working it out, God honors it. Giving your alms, your, your finances, your tithe, your offerings unto God, God honors it. He's even moved, amen, by a woman that gave all that she had. God will get the glory. Come on. And God never forgets what he's spoken upon your life. Don't ever forget what God has called you. And that's my, that's my message tomorrow. I don't mean to get into it, but I'm, I'm, I'm here trying to see this in Psalm 91. Our, we were in Psalm 91. He tells him, he says, you will call upon me. I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Praise God. How many want that in your life? 
I want to I wanna be here for a long time. No, I don't, I don't mean like this week, you know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But my wife will be calling. Hey, 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 what are you doing? Go back to Isaiah again. And he says in Isaiah 54, where we were, verse 2, enlarge the place of your tent. Enlarge the place of your tent. How big is your vision? How big is your location? Amen. How big is the position that God has called you? Enlarge the place of your tent. And let them stretch out the curtains of your habitation. And when this begins to happen in your life, the Lord is going to begin to stretch you out. The Lord's going to get you out of your comfort zone. It's going to feel uneasy sometimes. We're going to go through, amen, some unfamiliar territories. Come on. But nevertheless, the Lord is with us. Nevertheless, if God is for us, who can be against us? If God spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. If God is with me, amen, he'll be with me every step of the way. He said, lo, I'm with you always, even unto the ends of the world. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I won't fear what man do to me. He's my helper. Come on. That's why he said, I'll look to the hills. From whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. Can you say Amen. And, and, and so we're going we're gonna to feel this. We're going to feel this in ministry, in leading our family, in teaching them how to pray, in getting into the Word of God, being transparent. That is what you're going to win people when you're honest with people. When you're, amen, and you're transparent, amen, they're able to relate with you. But when you act like nothing is wrong, when you act like you've never been through the valleys, come on. When you act like, you mean, you don't struggle, how are you going to reach the people? They're going to say, man, that guy's, that seems like nothing, you mean, nothing's wrong with him. He's so up there, and I'm so down here. You see what I'm saying? But being real. Being real with your congregation. Being real with your co-workers. We're a written epistle, read of all men. And may we, we may be the only King, New King James or whatever translation you read that a person would ever read. And they're watching your life. They're seeing how you are. They're seeing you how you are in the spring. They know how you are in the summer. But I'm going to be instant in season and out of season. I'm going to preach this word with long suffering and rebuke. Ouch. The word is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And the word deals with us first as ministers. The word deals with us even in our lives and then we're able to give it out. Come on, somebody. Because it's a two-edged sword, right? And sometimes you got to straighten some things out at home. You got to straighten some things out in your marriage. You got to straighten some things out with your children. You got to straighten some things out with some brothers. And they may not like it. They may not like it because we're living in these last days, amen, that there's going to be a form of godliness, but they're going to deny the power of God. They're going to have, be, have teachers of itching ears. They want to tickle ears. Amen. And satisfy the congregation. Come on. I'm not here, amen, to tickle ears. I'm here to deliver what God has given to me. Because he brought me here for such a time as this. And this might be, might be the only time. I don't know. 
But I would love to come back again. Can you say amen? Maybe come back with my family. Right? How many, how many love the Lord? Do you love the Lord? Do you, do you love, amen, Pastor Christian? <laughs> they throw you out there, brother. Amen. Do you love Pastor Dean? Hey. I love you. Praise your brother. Praise your brother. Amen. Can I get the worship leaders back up here again one more time? When we're starting to, amen, dig, dig amen, these, uh, these stakes into the ground, it's going to keep us from the attacks of the enemy. we got to go deep in, in the Lord. Just like the children of Israel, Israel did. When, when, the, when, they, when, the, when the spirit, when the cloud, amen, amen, descended down. Amen, that was, that was where, amen, they, were, they, they began to set up camp. And the glory of God would fall on that tabernacle. And Moses wasn't even able to go into that, 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 that place because of the glory of God. And then as soon as the, as the glory of God began to ascend up, amen, they began to, they began to fix, you know, set up, you know, get, uh, assemble, amen, gather up, and they begin to, amen, to follow the cloud by day, amen, and the fire by night. And so... And this one more, he talks about a man digging deep in Luke chapter 6, verse 40, 48. A man, a man building a house, he digs deep. He lays the foundation on the rock. He digs deep, amen. He, go, he goes deep, amen, in, in, into, the, into the ground. And the Lord began to show me this, that he said, what seems like it's in the, in the natural, we may not see, amen, certain rivers. Maybe there's rivers other places. Super spiritually, we may not see, seem like rivers flowing in, in, you know, in this valley. I don't, you know, we might not, like maybe going through a dry season. But he promised us, he said, I'm, I'm going to do a new thing. He said, I'm going to cause springs to come out of the desolate places. I'm going to cause rivers to flow in the desert places. The Lord began to show me this. He said, He said, I'm flowing in the undercurrent. I'm flowing where, where I hasn't seen. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse, verse 9. It is written, I hasn't seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered the heart of men. Maybe because they're too busy. Maybe, maybe, maybe they can't see it because simply they got their eyes on something else. But he said, it, 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 it isn't entered into the heart of man. The things that I've, I have prepared for them, for them that love me. Amen. And the Spirit of God, amen, is moving in the undercurrent. For he said, Bless is the man that standeth not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of God, as he meditate therein day and night. He shall be a tr like a tree planted by rivers of living water. Amen. And even though it, it may be a season you're going through, it may feel like a dry season. It may feel like a hard moment. You're like that tree. And you're saying, God, I know that the river is flowing. That his leaves will not wither away. That whatever he does, she does, is she will prosper. Come on. My daughters are going to prosper. My wife is going to prosper. Amen. Spirit of God Ministries, where I pastor, is going to prosper. Come on. We're going to bear forth, forth fruit in our season. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. How many pastors, how many leaders that we have in this house? How many 
Pastor, I want you to just come up here. Is it okay, Pastor? Is it okay? I want you to help me. Come, come up and help me. I want you to help me pray. And then as we begin to call those that need prayer. Amen. I want you to help me. Hallelujah. Angela, would you come and pray to you? Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Just stand to your feet. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Can I get a line, sign from right here and just make your way through? And me, all of us will be like a like a channel. They can stand alongside of each other, across from each other. You guys can start a line over here. Maybe let's start a, a channel over here. Start a line over here and just make your way through. And we'll go lay hands on you. Do you have any oil? Do you have any Christian? Do you have any oil? Awesome. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Just make a, make a, yeah, go in. Go in. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, just lift up your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Holy oh, Spirit, have your way. But lay hands on him, lay hands on him, everybody, this is goes through. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Oh.
what he's done for me. Lord, oh, say you can tell it like I can. What he's done for me. Oh, you can tell it like I can. What he's done for me. What the Lord has done for me. Yeah. 
You can tell it like I can what he's done for me. Oh, you can tell it like I can what he's done for me. You can tell it like I can what he's done for me. What the Lord has done for me. Oh, you can't tell it 
Come on, before we leave, just raise your hands. Thank you. Come on, just raise your hands. Thank you, Lord. Ah, oh, he's so good. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we acknowledge you tonight.
I say unto my children did I not say that I would pour out my presence did I not say that I was God and there was none like me did I not say that I am God and there is none like me for yea, this night I have healed your sickness. I have taken your disease. I have taken, I have taken, I have taken it. I have taken it. Yea, I am God. I am God. I am God. I am God. So worship me. Worship me. For yea. This night, my children, you are free indeed. on just open up your heart just let God love on you come on just open up your heart come on just let God love on you let God be God in your life Just let God love on you. Just let God love on you. You're his daughter. You're his son. He calls you worthy. Come on, just let God just love on you. <laughs> Here I am, Lord. Oh, Father, just love on me. Father, 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 just love me. Father, just love me. 
come a point church and I'll prophesy it that in this holy hush where our minds just on him and his presence we're going to hear heaven sound in this holy hush we're going to hear the angels singing in heaven We're going to heal the elders before the living creatures cry out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We're going to get into a place of such deep desire for God that it's going to feel like there's an open heaven. And I don't know, you might actually hear God singing over you. Zephaniah 317, it says that God is mighty to save, that he'll joy in his joy, in his love, and that God will sing a song over you. Can you imagine that? God singing over you right now. Why? Because you make his heart joyful. Because he loves you. But mark my words, one day in this church, we're going to hear heaven. And it's going to be so beautiful. We're not going to want to leave. Kind of like some of us feel right now. So heaven's going to sound so beautiful. You know what's awesome about that too? Is I have a dad and I have a brother in God's presence right now. You have a loved one right now who's before the throne. 
and you're just entering in by faith and you're praising God right next to them. You're praising God right along the side of them. Your moms, your dads right now. Standing before his throne. We're encompassed by a great cloud of witnesses. And we're just entering right along with them. Right along with them. Father, we thank you. Oh, precious Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that that he says, Jesus said, is expedient that I go away, that I may send the Comforter who will lead and guide us in all truth. I'm thankful today that you never left us alone, that your spirit continues to draw us continues to draw us into your presence and you are that father that runs towards us hugs us put a robe around us put a ring on our finger and I'm thankful for that that you're a God of redemption and father I just thank you for tonight where we felt your redemption inside of this place, your restoration, your love, and what you have reaching every one of us. And I'm thankful for that tonight. Lord, be with your people as they go. Lord, <laughs> as they wake up, Father, let them even feel it even greater, your presence. As they wake up, Father, just, Lord, let the joy just overtake them. Let the joy, Father, spring inside of their hearts. And that you'd give them that supernatural strength to face tomorrow. But I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You could go and you if you like. You could stay here and soak some more. But tomorrow we have service at 6.30. Invite someone. Praise the Lord. You're free to go if you want. But if you just want to stay and just to soak a little bit more in his presence, that's okay too. But God bless you guys. And just be uh, respectful as you leave, please. Thank you.